I think we're going to see a descend back into chaos. The intelligence community has been clear uh, that Al-Qaeda uh, does intend to resurge in the wake of a U.S. withdrawal. Uh, I do think the Taliban, unfortunately, is ascendant. I do not think the Afghan National uh, Security Forces will be able to hold uh, without our air support uh, and without our intelligence support, and importantly, that doesn't often get discussed, without our contract support that's helping them with a lot of their maintenance and logistics. One of the things I don't know that everyone realizes, when the military goes, those contractors will go, the CIA, our eyes and ears on the ground will go, we literally will have a black hole there. We're going to repeat the mistakes that President Obama made with the full pullout of Iraq that led to the resurgence of ISIS, uh, that led to the untold hundreds of thousands of deaths around the regions, attacks across Europe, attacks across the United States. Uh, sadly, I think we're about to repeat that movie, that nightmare, uh, all over again. And the Pentagon has recently come out, just a few days ago, they released a joint statement with NATO, and they promised that, number one, they would continue to fund key Afghan capabilities like the Air Force, Special Missions Wing, and Afghan Security Forces, and also maintain counterterrorism capabilities in the region sufficient to ensuring Afghanistan cannot become a safe haven for terrorists. So, uh, it, tell me why either you think that's not the case, or to what extent that really what we're talking about is there is a compromise out there to be had. Yeah, listen, that, that I understand the Pentagon's talking points, but I've been talking directly with a number of their leaders. There is no plan. Uh, they're incredibly concerned. Uh, you know, here's why this is even worse than the pullout of Iraq. In Iraq, as you know, Ian, just looking at the geography, we have all kinds of basing options to go back in when we eventually needed to as ISIS went surging across the country and almost took Baghdad. Uh, after they took Mosul. We have Turkey, we have Israel, we have Kuwait, we have the Gulf states, uh, we have Kurdistan and our local Kurdish allies, both in Syria and uh, Iraq. We don't have any of that in Afghanistan, none. You know, we have uh, Russia in the stands, China, Iran, and Pakistan. We give up that one base at Bagram, we literally are out of options. And the other piece that I find uh, you know, really <laughs> egregious coming from the administration is this promise to keep funding the Afghan security forces with no Americans there to oversee those billions of dollars that are going into one of the most corrupt governments, but going into the security forces as they try to fight uh, back against the Taliban. And finally, you know, one of the reasons that Biden cited uh, in his withdrawal speech was great power competition and a shift to great power competition. I fully support that. I've spent a year on a China task force. I believe we are in a cold war with the Chinese Communist Party, or at least they are with, with us, and we just need to wake up to it. But what is the only country in the world, Ian, where we have a base that borders China? Afghanistan. Why would we give up a base that's on the western flank of China, southern flank of Russia, and eastern flank of Iran if our concern are on those top three adversaries. I mean, the United States has the world's largest blue water Navy. Uh, the ability to mass forces in the Indian Ocean is certainly real. There is some discussion talking about using, uh, country, engaging in agreements in countries like Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, uh, to have bases in the region. We've got drone capacity. We've got intelligence capacity. Uh, are, are, are none of those remotely close to being able to use the Bagram base? And if so, why not? All of the stands, uh, K2 in Uzbekistan, Manas in Kyrgyzstan, we've been asked to leave years ago, and I do not see the Russians allowing us to have basing there again. The, if you just look at the distances that are in play coming from the Gulf states, one, we don't have authorities yet. We may get them, but we don't have them yet to launch lethal strikes into Afghanistan from those states. Uh, and the distances that we have uh, make that incredibly problematic. Just with a drone, I was just talking to the Pentagon about this a few days ago, will use up three quarters of its fuel getting there and back. Uh, that gives it very little time to stay on station. 
Uh, you know, it's a landlocked country. We have to keep those overflight rights over Pakistan, but that's always problematic. But the real issue is, you know, in order to have that source network on the ground, you have to have people on the ground. Does that necessarily mean that you no longer have U.S. military in an advisory capability, for example? Does that necessarily mean that you no longer have the U.S. intelligence officers that are prepared and engaged directly with Afghan uh, sources on the ground? You know, I can tell you, I just spoke to someone just back from our embassy in Kabul. They're burning documents as we speak. Uh, you know, I can see a, uh, a, a small presence left there uh, but that cannot nearly handle uh, the types of sources that we meet, that we need uh, out, going out and about. Uh, and it can't possibly oversee the billions of dollars going into the Afghan army out into the hinterlands uh, that I think we'll need for effective oversight. <laughs>